Hey, this is Bo. We're back on the lounge. We got a chance to talk to Howard, the man, Doomsday. John, how you doing, buddy? I'm pretty good. How you doing? Good, man. You're really making a name for yourself as Doomsday. You've got a very <laughs> an un, unbeaten streak going right now. UFC is in love with you. The fans are in love with you. It's got to feel pretty good to be called John right now. Man, it is, man. It feels awesome, man. It's unbelievable, man. <laughs> we talked about the fact of signing autographs after each match. How many autographs have you signed so far? Hello? Yep, yeah, uh, we'll wait for a second. So, John, how many autographs have you signed in the last two weeks? Oh, man, probably like uh, three to 400, man. <laughs> you know, it's hard to believe from the earlier stories when you were all beat up and you wouldn't say die, you kept fighting, now you step into the ring and uh, you're going against some of the best fighters in the entire world and you're beating them all. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, man. I don't know if I'm beating them all, but I'm going to try, but um, yeah. I'm doing pretty good, man. 2 and 0 in the UFC, man. Feels good, man. It's a big accomplishment for me, and hopefully, I can keep keep coming with wins, man. You know, when you went against the Barncat, we said if you got in the inside of him, you're able to do it. The Barncat tried to put you in a, in a headlock. He tried to finagle you, but the fact that uh, you were as good as you were and well as disciplined and prepared, you escaped a lot of stuff that the Barncat had ready for you. Yeah, I mean, we kind of know he's going to try to go for, like, guillotines, triangles, because of his body type, and it makes sense for him to go for that. And um, surprisingly, he didn't really stand with me by so, by so much, man. So that was a little surprising. Maybe um, maybe he respected my um, Muay Thai and um, not my grappling. I don't know, but it, it didn't work out. But credit to the ball cat, man. Um, he did have a hard cut, man. So, I mean, that was a factor, too, but I take the win. <laughs> well, you know, John, you went after him, and you weren't intimidated, and there was a huge size difference. And your your size is perfect for your weight. The barn cat needs to put on some weight because, you know, you were solid rock. You went after him. You took care of business. He tried to hurt you. And the fact that you kept moving using some of your boxing skills, some of your grappling skills, um, it, it, was, it was a beautiful show for you. Oh, yeah, man. What it is is... Uh... It was weird. I'm thinking I'm the shortest welterweight right now, and he's the tallest welterweight, or was the tallest welterweight in the division. So that was a, that was interesting. They took the shortest and the tallest and put them together to see what happens. So that was a little, that was like a little clown show right there. <laughs> but um, no, it, it was it was awesome, man. I think I, once I got in the side, I established my uh, my power against him, man, and um, that's what got me the win, man. Yeah, when you were sitting um, at the end of the fight and uh, they were talking about the decision, was there any doubt that you won the fight? It wasn't a doubt for us at all. We knew from, you know, from years of watching the UFC that you're on our cards, you were way ahead. Yeah, well, I was just sure, man, because when I was in Philly and um, I don't know how the judge was going to see. I know I had more takedowns than him. I know I was on top of him more than he was, but uh, I don't know what they see and what, what he did, you know. I mean, he... Uh, he, was on, he took me down a few times, and he threw me over his head, and um, I did the same thing to him. So the, clo the fight was pretty close. I wasn't too sure how the judge was going to see it, man. I know it was real close. One thing I knew that. Well, the last two fights went all the way, and I know the UFC is anxious to take a winner and put him against another winner. Um, is there what, What's the next fight for you, and what's the arrangement? Um, I don't know. The UFC didn't call me yet, and, uh, they, and uh, tell me, I actually requested Carl Parisian to fight. I want to fight him, man. Parisian. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I think he's a legend in the sport. I respect him, man. And I want to fight him, man. I want to fight the best, man. And um, if I can fight him, that would be awesome, man. That would be a good experience for me. That would let me know what level I'm on, man. If I beat him, that would be even better, man. But we can see what happens. Now, John, when you sit down and watch this video, what is something you know you have to work better on that you know any person can see? And what's that one element that you know that they may not be watching, even if they watch the video, that you need to work on? I need to work on everything. Okay, more, more of my striking, more definitely more of my grappling. I kept going to this guy, I had to pass his guard. Uh, what it is is because he was so long, I was scared to pass his guard because if I go to pass, I mean he could triangle my whole body. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he put me in triangle with both my arms, so it was a, it was a lot, it was a lot more difficult. Pass his guard in the third round. I finally did pass his guard and start working my submission game. But pass his guard was a little difficult because the legs were so long. It was like unbelievable. I felt like anything, any little super thing he could do. Like uh, I seen guys like six two man put guys in triangles with both arms in. 
So I was like, you know what? Let me be really careful. That's why I was kind of cautious. And then second, third round, I loosened up, and I started to pass the sky and stuff like that, man. You know, that was a big card um, that you won on. Um, you know, did you did, when you're in the training room getting ready for your fight, do you all have a chance to watch what's going on in the ring, or do you pretty much uh, just focus on warming yourself up, body bag, some push-ups, some, some benches? No, we, um, we watch, man. Some of the fights we watch, see how, how the fights are going, see who's getting knocked out, and how the flow is going. And um, after that, like, the, the fight before my one and watch, I'm too busy warming up and getting ready. But, yeah, we um, we sit back there and we watch the whole fight, just like um, the fans do. We do it too, man. So, um, and we, it's it's good to get the mold of stuff, see how the fans react, see are they, are they booers, are they pleasers. You know, you, you never know, man, going out there. It's uh, <laughs> funny sometimes. You know, I love the fans, don't, don't get me wrong. I love the UFC fans, but in certain cities, man, you don't know if they're booers or pleasers, you know? <laughs> yeah, for real. Now, um... When now we've heard a lot of stories about the locker room, and we know in promoting the fact is that you know the fight that you have is really a um, an art form. It's uh, it's a lot different than a backroom brawl. It's very precise. Um, the athletes that you run into, what is the most surprising thing? We've heard before about Brock that Brock's actually a great guy, straight up the board, and he's willing to shake hands and meet. Um, his media face is quite the opposite, but a lot of Tara LaRosa says he's a real nice guy, um, that he's really personable. Who are some of those guys that the media doesn't like, but you have had no problems at all with? Um, wow, let me see. Uh, I, I put you in a spot, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Actually, the, the biggest guy to me, I said Tito. Tito's the nicest guy you ever want to meet in person, man. I met him, she could see him. I look, I look up to you, man. He talked to me. He's a cool guy, man. Media doesn't like him, like him too much, but I think he, he puts a show off in the media, not necessarily person to person. He's a nice guy, man. That's I was kind of surprised about that. I was like, oh, I was like, hey, this guy goes. So I went up to him, I respect. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, buddy? What's up, man? Nice to meet you, man. How you feel? I was like, all right, man. Go let me go put a good show on. I was like, oh shit, okay. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> now, um. Your agent has obviously been working with the UFC to try to figure out when your next fight is. Is it going to be this year in December because they haven't filled the card yet, or is it going to be next year in 2010? Hey, man, they didn't tell me nothing yet. I have no clue, man. When, as soon as I find out, you don't know. They didn't tell me nothing yet. I'm trying to get it in for this year, man. Yeah, because uh, you've been pumping them out hard. You're well-trained. You didn't look like you let up in this fight, and I'm willing to bet that if you could fight next month, you would. Oh, man, I definitely would, man. I, if I could fight next week, I would, man. That's that's the way I try to roll, man. Try to stay in basic shape. Now, I'm not always in fight shape, but I try to stay in uh, regular shape. So if I get caught in the fight within two weeks, two weeks, I can get in the fight. You know, get ready to get in the fight shape. You know what I mean? Absolutely. John, I want to say thanks for showing up being so strong. Just keep us in the loop on your next fight, buddy. Definitely, man. Hey, I'm trying to put it out there. Yo, Parisian is the person, next person I want, so... I think it'll be an exciting fight. He has good judo. I have crazy um, style grappling, and I'm pretty sure they're throwing me around, but uh, it'll be an awesome fight. John Doomsday Howard, you heard it here first. He wants Parisian. Let's see if we can't get this ball rolling for him, and let's see if we John can't get that belt big time. Right, John? Oh, yeah. You know I'm coming for that soon. <laughs> We're out of here. Thanks a lot, everybody. One second, John.